like to tell you the story about the boy who had ten dollars. Now, the first thing you need to know about this boy is that he was super excited about his ten dollar bill. And he looked at it all day, and he thought about it, and when nobody was looking, every once in a while, he would smell it. And he thought about all the things he could do and buy with ten dollars. And before the boy went to sleep, he decided to put his ten dollars on the table where he knew it was going to be safe the whole night. And then he went to bed and he dreamt about everything he was going to buy with ten dollars. Because you have to realize that that money was very important to the boy and he had big plans for what he was going to do with it. What he wanted to buy and he knew that ten dollars was exactly what he needed. Well, when the boy woke up in the morning, he went over to his table and he was horrified because the money was gone. Now he knew he had put it right there on the table before he went to bed the night before, but sure enough, he was looking at the table and it was gone and there was only one conclusion. His money had been stolen. Well, the boy was offended. He was saddened that the thought that someone had taken his money and it made him angry. Somehow, this problem had to be fixed. That boy needed his $10 back and he needed it back now, but it didn't come back that day. Another day went by and the next morning he woke up and to his surprise, he found a note on his front porch with an offering. Now the thief was sorry for what he had done and he wanted to make it right. But the thief hadn't brought back the $10 cash that he had taken from the boy. Instead, he brought back 10 Pokemon cards. Well, I mean, Pokemon cards are nice and all, but it was not the $10 that was stolen, and the boy was not satisfied. Another day brought another offering from the thief, an attempt to just make things right. But this time, it was 10 cookies. And again, it was not enough to satisfy the boy's anger. He wanted exactly ten dollars because that was what was taken from him and nothing else would do. Well, every day thereafter, a new offering appeared from the thief and each day a new gift was an attempt to, to pay back what was stolen. And all these attempts seemed to get more and more desperate as time went on. But every offering the thief brought failed to satisfy the boy, or even to earn his favor in any way at all. Well, that's because the boy wanted one thing, and one thing only. The only thing that would satisfy him and please him was cash. The exact thing that was stolen from him. Ten dollars. Meanwhile, you can imagine how all of this felt to the thief. I mean, he truly felt sorry for what he had done, but he didn't have the $10 that he had stolen anymore. He did his best to try and pay something back. The thief brought all the things that were most important to him. And, and he even brought his Pokemon cards and his favorite books. I mean, he tried everything. He began to feel desperate because every offering he brought was just not good enough to pay back the wrong he had done to the boy. And deep down, he knew that the only thing that would satisfy the boy was $10 in cash, the very thing he did not have to give him. Now, this story is a good reminder to us about this question from the Gospel. Why must Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, be truly human? Just like the thief 
stole from the boy and offended him greatly. We have sinned against God and we have offended him greatly. Because of our sin against God, we're separated from him. And that means that we have to die. Now the Bible says that whenever there is sin against God, there must be death to pay for that sin. The only other alternative is for there to be a substitute sacrifice for our sin. Someone who could die in our place so that God can be satisfied and so that we can please him. Now the question is, what will we choose to be our substitute sacrifice that we can offer to God? Like the thief in the story, we could think of all kinds of things that we could try to offer God. Even our most special things, things that mean a lot to us. But there is only one substitute sacrifice that we can bring to God that will satisfy and please him. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. It says, For this reason Jesus had to be made like his brothers, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the perfect substitute sacrifice. The only sacrifice that God will accept and use to repair the wrong that we've done against him. Jesus is the only sacrifice that will satisfy and please God. And it was necessary for Jesus to be human like us. God required a human to pay the price of death because it was humans who offended him, you and I. No other form of payment would be acceptable to him. Jesus Christ was fully human and is also fully God. By believing in his death and resurrection, his substitute sacrifice for our sin, we can satisfy God and we can please him and we can have a relationship with him. 